Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is gonna be on why a carnivore diet may help. We'll also talk about when it may not help. We're gonna dive in, we'll talk about the reasons why, some of the nutrient effects, uh, some of the underlying mechanisms, and if it's not working for you, what could potential next steps be? And before we do, please smash that like button. Really helps that YouTube algorithm. I'll give you one second. All right, excellent. Put your comments below. If you've done a carnivore diet already, let me know what you've noticed, what you felt. Give me some feedback on what you experienced. All right, so first let's dive in. What's a carnivore diet? So essentially it's gonna be a diet consisting primarily of animal products, with the exceptions maybe uh, egg yolks, uh, grass-fed butter, and sometimes can be allowed bone broth, sea salt, those kind of things tend to be allowed. Sometimes extra mineral support, potassium, magnesium, but primarily 100% animal-based products. Now, what are some of the benefits of animal-based products? Well, one, you're having less anti-nutrients. Part of the reason why certain diets work, like an autoimmune diet or a low FODMAP diet or an SED or a GAPS diet, is because they're cutting out a lot of anti-nutrients like salicylates, phenols, um, autoimmune foods, gluten, casein, uh, fermentable carbohydrates like FODMAPs, which are uh, fructo, oligo, di, and mono, and polyols. These are fermentable foods that could be a problem when you have bacterial overgrowth. So less anti-nutrients. Also, less inflammation, right? Because we're still cutting out grains and dairy, and uh, we may allow butter and ghee, but conventional dairy and such, we're also gonna be focusing on, well, it's naturally gonna have the carbohydrates in check, and hopefully the meat quality is pasture-fed, so omega-3 to 6 ratio will be more balanced, and we'll have a lot of nutrient density. Why? Because healthy animals, they are bioaccumulators of plant matter, right? They bioaccumulate, so you get the amount of plant nutrition that would take you pounds of nutrients to eat, plant nutrients, you can get it in less than a pound, right? I think it's the same amount of nutrition in kale, 15 cups of kale is about eight ounces of a ribeye or grass-fed beef, right? You're gonna have 15 cups of kale or could you sit down and have a half a pound steak? It's pretty easy to knock down eight ounce steak, right? Not too bad. So less inflammation, of course, omega-3 to six ratio is gonna be better, assuming quality is good. Of course, we're not having all the junky omega-6 vegetable oils. We're not gonna be having excess carbohydrates, so that's important. Yeah, you'll get arachidonic acid, but that's fine. You need that anyway. We're gonna be getting healthy animal sources, though. Increased nutrient density. How so? Well, we have things like, for instance, uh, we have fat-soluble vitamins. So vitamin A, D, E, and K are very important. If we add in glandulars, glandulars like liver glandular, right? Right, or even a multi-source glandular. Glandulars are really nutrient dense, like lots of cultures would save glandular tissue and give it to pregnant women during that fertile season because they knew it was so important. Um, so we have our fats. Oh, I'm also gonna highlight here, you know, essential, essential amino acids and obviously essential fatty acids. Remember, I didn't say essential carbohydrates. There's no essential carbohydrate. Your body needs certain fats that you can't you can't make, it needs to get it through food. Same thing with amino acids, eight to nine different amino acids that are essential, really important. Now, this forces the body into a ketogenic state. Some people have done well on a ketogenic diet and they went even better while on a carnivore diet. Why? Well, carnivore diet, because you're restricting lots of carbohydrates, you're automatically gonna be going ketogenic. So what does that mean? Well, once you get your carbs, maybe your net carbs below 50, for some people maybe 20, you're gonna start spitting out more ketones, which are fatty acid metabolites for fuel. And this can be helpful. People that did keto and went, did well on it, but did better on a carnivore diet, guess the reason why. It's probably because of the anti-nutrients. It could have been the broccoli and the spinach and the other healthy non-starchy veggies were still maybe a little bit too irritating. It's very possible, right? And so this forces the body into a ketogenic state. Some people can be in a ketogenic state with much higher level of carbohydrate. The only X factor here is you have to make sure the meat is full fat. We wanna make sure full fat meat sources, right? Full fat meat sources. And this is the only way you could screw this up as well as poor quality meats. If you're doing boneless, skinless chicken breasts, right? Rabbit meat, whatever, extremely lean meat sources, right? You're gonna have problems. Um, it has nutrients that help heal the gut. So let's talk about that. What's in here? Well, we have lots of glycine, right? Glycine's really good, really helpful for the gut lining, really good. The enterocytes love glycine. Uh, it's also gonna have, if you do things like bone broth 
or collagen amino acids from like the knuckles or from the connective tissue, you're also going to get things like you have the glycine in there. You're going to get leucine. You're going to get isoleucine as well, which are kind of branch chain amino acids. And then you're also going to get ornithine. There's a whole bunch of really good amino acids that are going to make a big difference on the connective tissue. Excellent. And now also, if you start feeling worse with a gut issue, with a carnivore template and your gut feels worse, why made that happen? Well, amino acids, fat, just protein and fat digestion can be harder on your hydrochloric acid and your enzyme reserve. So if you have, if you have low HCL levels, if you have low enzyme levels, or if you have low bile salt levels, or maybe you don't even have a gallbladder to begin with, you're gonna have a hard time breaking down fats and proteins. Now, what can you look for? Are you bloated? Are you gassy after a meal? Do you feel better when you cut down the protein and fat? Um, if you added HCL and enzyme, do you feel better, right? Do your stools float? Do you notice your stools float? Do you notice like skid marks on the toilet seat? That's typically because the fat isn't being digested and the, the fat's more streaky, right? Also, do you, does your stool have a yellowish, kind of blondish or grayish color to it? That's a sign that we have maldigested fat or steatorrhea. If we run a, a GI map stool test, we also look for uh, undigested fat in that stool test. That can be really helpful. So these are some things that can make a really big difference. And of course, what are some of the underlying issues why these things aren't working? Well, there could be an underlying gut infection, whether it's SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth. It could also be um, H. pylori infection. It could be a parasitic infection like uh, blastocystis hominis, giardia, cryptosporidium, antipistolytica, defragilis, et cetera. A lot of different infections that could be holding the gut back. There could be unresolved hormone issues. If you're a woman, there's a lot of PMS stuff. That could be a problem. It could be total adrenal dysfunction or female hormone issues or low thyroid. Low thyroid can really mess up gut motility and can put stress on the gut. And if you have really low motility, you're going to be reabsorbing a lot of the toxins in your stool. So that's kind of a big thing. So who does better on a carnivore diet? Well, if you have a known autoimmune disease, it's always good to at least give it a try. If you have a known autoimmune condition, irritable bowel disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, which would kind of fall under that umbrella, a vitiligo, it could be MS, Parkinson's, right? These are things that are gonna be very helpful to look at trying or at least implementing them for a period of time. Now, what do you miss when you are not having all the vegetables, right? Well, if you know about vegetables, the things that are gonna have that are gonna be beneficial is they're gonna have antioxidants, okay? They're gonna have things like antioxidants that we're missing. So on the veggie side, we're missing the antioxidants. We're missing polyphenols. And these are going to be, I think, some of the really big things, right? Antioxidants, polyphenols. The big concern is oxidative stress of doing too much meat. Are you getting enough of certain minerals like manganese and magnesium? Can you get enough of that just through animal products? That's the tough question. I think you should always be on a really good supplement anyway. I think if you are going to go full in on carnivore, you should be having some type of glandular support because the glands do concentrate nutrients better. I wouldn't trust getting all of my nutrients from meat alone unless I'm getting some kind of glandular source, maybe extra cod liver oil to be safe or taking a really good clean multi in between. I'm just, I'm on the fence about that. So we have some of these, con these nutrients here. Now, I think this is kind of like the X factor, right? Like this is the big question mark. How important are some of these things? Well, some people that have irritable bowel disease or an autoimmune condition, the reduction of inflammation is more important than the nutrient side on the other fence. So some people, this is more important because their inflammation is already low. And I think it's a genetic predisposition and who does better on what. But if you have a known autoimmune issue, joint issue, RA, MS, I think it's worthwhile trying it for at least a month and then doing a reintroduction to an autoimmune template and maybe even a low FODMAP template and then kind of going up from there. The other X factor would be if the meat's aged, there could be a lot of histamine in the meat and being careful on the histamine side. So 
I've done these kind of diets with patients, probably on the carnivore side dozens of times, but I have a lot of autoimmune patients, so I have a lot of data points to try from. There's a lot of people online that talk about these diets. The problem is they only have their experience. They don't work with people and see how it's actually implemented and see the results. So I have kind of that different window. For me, it's not a diet that I personally do, but I'm pretty close to it. I'm kind of a, a paleo, lower carb, kind of keto, mostly autoimmune, sometimes paleo kind of guy, and I feel best on that. So I hope this helps. If you want to dive in deeper, if you have an autoimmune issue, you want to look deeper, or you're having a hard time on a carnivore diet, or you want to know more about it, click down below, schedule a consult with myself and or my colleagues, and I look forward to helping y'all out. You guys have a phenomenal day. Make sure you subscribe, comments below. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye.